Hello, hello everybody. Welcome, welcome. Let's just see who we've got in the chat today. Hi Dustin, hi Anna, hi Roxana, hi Stas. Thank you so much for joining me on this live stream. So let's jump right into it. So today we are going to talk about how social media helps you to get clients, what to post on social media. We're going to tell you how to post on social media without feeling overwhelmed because I know that's something that a lot of people ask me about and I'm going to tell you a little bit about our social media challenge that we're doing live in April so thank you everybody for joining me I can see lots of people coming in now Shannon Travis hey hey Richard hey Nicole so do make sure that you say hello in the chat and let us know uh, where you're all from, which you're all doing already. So thank you very much for that. So let's jump right into the presentation then. So give me a yes in the chat if you're ready for this workshop today. I wanna see you all chatting in there and we're gonna have a little Q&A at the end. So I'm not gonna be really looking at the chat too much throughout the presentation, but Sam will be in there chatting to you all. So she will gather up all of your questions and then at the end, I promise to answer them all. So what I want you to go and do is go to motionhatch.com forward slash social guide. This is where you can download our social media guide. And this is gonna give you 50 post examples that you can use on your social media. And it's gonna give you more explanation and more templates. And this is what you need for the challenge as well. So when we start the challenge in April, we're gonna be sending you emails about how to join in with the challenge and how to get involved and share and all things like that. Cool, so let me know in the chat if you can relate to this. You're too busy to post on social media. You don't think social media will help you to get clients. You're overwhelmed and you're unsure of what you should be posting. That's quite a common one. And you're scared to put yourself out there and you feel like your work isn't good enough. So give me a shout if that's like, if you feel like that's you. So yes, I can see in the chat that you're all getting pumped up for this workshop, so that is awesome. And please do let me know if this sounds like you because I wanna make sure that I'm teaching you all of the right things today. So thank you very much. Cool. Well, on today's workshop, we're gonna show you how to get more clients, or how to post on social media without feeling overwhelmed, and also how to be more confident online. So you've already been doing this, but if you haven't, please do introduce yourself in the chat, say where you're from, say what you do as well. And I just wanna say who I am, just in case you're brand new here and you don't know, I'm Hayley, I'm the founder of Motion Hatch, and Motion Hatch helps designers and animators to build a successful career and business. And if you're brand new to the channel, then please do hit subscribe and the notification bell because we bring our weekly videos around pricing, around how to get clients. Sometimes we even do two videos a week. So if you're interested in that, make sure you are subscribed. And of course we might do more workshops like this one as well. So first off, we are gonna cover how social media helps you to get clients. Now you might actually want to, you know, make some notes during this workshop. You might wanna grab yourself a pen and paper and those kind of things. So let's get into this one then. So imagine most of you would like to have more or better clients or a job in the creative industry. And it can be hard to see how social media can help us to do that when most of the time it feels like a bit of a distraction. But social media can actually be a powerful tool to help us to build awareness of our work, to grow our network, and also build trust with our potential clients as well before they've even worked with us. So it can be a very powerful tool for your business. So you should remember, like I just said, that social media is a tool for your business and career, and it should be used in this way. So when you're scrolling away on Instagram, I know that it can feel like most of the time is just a distraction, but it really, really does depend on how you use it. So I'm gonna explain 
more how to be productive with social and how to use it without being distracted by it later on. So do make sure you, if you're watching the replay, to continue watching this or to stick around to the end if you're watching live. So obviously I don't want to bore you with too many statistics, but I thought this was really interesting. There's this actually now, as of January 2022, 4.6 billion users of social media and 58% of the total global population, which is pretty incredible, really. So I want you to think about what this means for you. And if you think that potentially some of your clients might be out there on social media looking for you on there. So this is what we wanna think about. So maybe this is the best, but also the most obvious way that you can use social media to help you get clients is of course, to make them aware of you. So clients can't hire you if they're not aware of you. So we can see artists are getting hired more and more based on their online personas. We've seen in 2021, especially how artists have been using their existing audiences that they've built on social media to take advantage of things like the NFT space. And by building an audience for your work, you're opening yourself up to many more opportunities that are actually even outside the realm of client work, which I think is really exciting. So these are three of my favorite creators right now, Steffi Fung, she's doing very, very well on TikTok if you wanna check her out on there. And Moni LaRussa is one of my favorite motion designers and artists as well, that's her Instagram. And obviously Cabeza Patata are doing amazing stuff. So I recommend highly that you go and check out all of those, but I just wanted to illustrate to you that there are motion designers, designers and animators out there who have big followings on social media and that it can be done. So this, we can also use social media to grow our network if we do it in the right way. And everyone knows that networking, of course, is very important and it can be extremely effective in person. But how often really do we get to meet up in person? And especially since the last few years, you know, we haven't been able to meet up in person because of COVID and things like that. So I think it is important to build our social presence online as well. So there are, of course, ways that we can build trust through social, which is extremely, extremely important for building your long-term client relationships. And of course, you can do this in a number of ways by using behind the scenes and showing some process of your work, then someone might see how they could work with you. So I put, this is Neil Verhartwitz, hopefully I'm saying his name right, a little bit of his work there. You can also bring your personality so that potential clients can see what you may be like to work with or what interests that you might have that might be relevant to their team or project. So you could talk about maybe how important family is to you or something like that. So I think it's really good to bring a little bit of personality into your social media and not always just be promoting your own work and selling on there, which is what we're gonna talk more about later. So it can also help you to attract a group of like-minded people who want to promote each other and share work. So a post that I might do is, you know, sharing something about my good friend, Jake Bartlett's YouTube channel. And then he might share my YouTube channel back. So then that obviously builds more trust with more people and also grows our audiences. So you could think about doing something similar, maybe with your motion design or design friends that you have as well. So the next thing that I'm going to talk about is probably the biggest question that I get asked, and that is what to post on social media. So I'm just going to have a little check into the chat and make sure that everything is going well over there. It all seems like it's good. Awesome. Cool. So let's continue. So what to post on social media? Well, we're gonna to touch on quite broad topics here and ideas of what you can post and not 
really go into detail on specific platforms or formats because unfortunately it does change so often. But if you download the social guide and you also watch this workshop, then you are going to be armed with the best things that you can have for your success across all platforms. So everything that I'm going to talk about does apply to all of the platforms. We're going to get a little bit specific, but not really go into detail because obviously it changes on a daily basis. So do you need to post a brand new piece of work every day? So this is probably the biggest question that I get asked. And I'd love to hear from you in the chat whether, you know, you've, you feel like you, you have to post a brand new piece of work every day. And I think this is getting asked more and more, especially since everybody has seen the success that Mike Winkleman, aka Beeple has had a lovely piece of work from him there. But I, I really don't think that you have to post every day on social media. So the short answer is no to this, that you don't have to post at least a brand new piece of work every day. But what is really, really important is being consistent. This is more important than posting every day. And also I want to talk a little bit later about how you don't actually have to post your work every day and it can actually be a bad thing if you do that as well. So it's better to post once a week than like when you do five days in a row than not post um, at all for two months. So also, like I mentioned previously, you shouldn't just be shouting about your work and this can actually be a benefit to you as well because you will have more content if you're not just shouting about your work. So as we saw in the previous section on how social helps us to get clients, we need to post different types of content that can give us these benefits, which are gaining awareness, building trust, and also growing our network. So what I like to do is I like to use a formula that I call the RICS formula. So you can see here directly how each of the RICS formula relates to each of the benefits of posting on social media that, and they can also help you to accelerate those benefits to help you to build a network and also get more clients, which is what we want. So the first one in the RICS formula is relatable. So that helps us to build trust by posting relatable posts. And then interactive posts helps us to get engagement. Community posts help us to build our network. And then obviously you want to include some sales or promotional posts where you might be posting your own work because then you are having all of the engagement and all of the building the network and the community and things like that. But if you never post your work, then no one would know what you were doing. So it's good to have this kind of balance. So we can see there's also interactive posts, like I mentioned, which I've included because I think that it's really, really important to get engagement because the platforms love engagement. They want you to keep their customers on the platforms as long as possible. So they will show them what they will interact with basically. And because they believe that's what they will like, it will keep them on the platform for longer. So obviously everyone's heard about, you know, Social media gives you more dopamine hits for the user, which makes you spend more time on the platform, which makes more money for the social media networks through advertising. So we can also build our network and community by being social on social media. So I think it's funny that we always forget that social media is really about being social. And I wanna tell you a little bit more about what I mean by that. So I want you to spend a small amount of time each day engaging with others on social media and providing meaningful value to them. So not just commenting a little emoji. Um, what I want you to do is provide value and that will definitely result in your posts getting more engagement and also even getting new clients as well. 
So you can, for example, find a producer on LinkedIn, a studio that you might admire, and you can follow them. And when they post about their studio's new work, you could leave them a nice comment and later follow up with an email. And this is actually a great way to warm up your prospects. So this is helping you turn your cold leads into warm leads before you reach out to them via a cold email. So this is like another little way and another little tip for you to use social media to help you to get clients. So I wanted to mention Gary Vaynerchuk's book, Jab, Jab, Right Hook. I recommend that you give it a little read. And in it, he talks about how constantly selling on social media doesn't work and you have to give value first. So you can see if we look at Jab, Jab, Right Hook and we look at our Rick's formula, relatable interactive and community are our jabs and our right hook is the sales so that's what Gary talks about in his book about how you need to be doing different types of posts and then also including these promotional sales types of posts as well and you shouldn't always be selling and then you shouldn't always be doing posts and never selling too so you've got to try and find the right balance so I think the Rick's formula is the perfect balance for this. So let's go through a few examples based on the Rick's formula. I'm just going to have another little check in, see how everybody's doing. So I think that Sam will, is posting the social guide link. So do make sure you go and go over there and download it as well, because then you'll be able to take part in our April challenge, which I'm going to tell you a little bit more about later. So do let us know as I'm going through, if you have any questions, do put them in the comments. Obviously, if you're watching the replay afterwards, I'll be answering the questions in the comments. If you're here live, then we will be answering the questions in the chat and the Q&A later. Cool, so examples. So first I'm gonna talk about a relatable post. So this might be a post where you're sharing a story on your Instagram or something like that, reintroducing yourself. So you might share something like I have done here, like saying I'm Haley. I wanted to reintroduce myself here since I haven't done it for a while. I'm the founder of Motion Hatch and on the weekends I'm usually running or going on walks in very twisty woods, as you can see here. I love this picture, I think it's very nice. And um, here's my lovely assistant, Elvis. Uh, and I've also asked them a question, which is really important because by asking a question on your posts, you're, it helps you to engage with other people and to grow your network as well as helping you to build trust. So I highly recommend that you do a post like this. And obviously we'll include one like this in our April challenge too. So if you wanna take part in that, we're gonna give you a lot more help during the challenge and we'll give you feedback and we'll also be coming in on your posts and sharing your posts as well. So do make sure you take part in the challenge and you download the social media guide. So then an interactive post could be something like this. So I'd love to know in the chat or in the comments below for you watching the replay, are you team tidy labels or are you team to organize chaos when it comes to organizing your work? So let us know in the chat. This is just a fun little game that we can do while we're watching this workshop. But as you can see here, when we do interactive posts and we're asking questions on our social media, it can get an awful lot of engagement. And I've just put some of the comments that we got on here, but I couldn't include all of them because there were so many. We got 41 comments so far on this post, which obviously that is signaling to Instagram that it should push this post out to more people, which means you get more comments and then you're getting more awareness for your work. So I think that you know, it's really, really important to do these interactive types of posts. And I'd love to know in the chat or in the comments below the video, if you're watching the replay, what you think um, a good type of interactive post you could do could be. So another example of community, this is actually one of our latest YouTube videos. So go and watch it if you haven't already. But why this is a community post is because we want to build community with other YouTubers while also giving value to you, our audience. So we're recommending the best channels where you can learn After Effects 
So this is a perfect video for us to share because we're recommending other people. So we're building a network with them, the other YouTubers, and we're also giving you a video that is really helpful to you in your career. So it's kind of twofold, but that's why it's a community post. So a community post can be a post giving value. It can be teaching a skill or recommending or celebrating other people as well. So let us know in the chat or in the comments what community posts that you could think of. And you could also use this as a community post for you as well. So what you could do, because maybe, you know, learn about some new After Effects channels from this video. So you could share this on your social media and you could say, hey, um, I've, I watched this video from Motion Hatch. It was really good. I actually learned about Chris Zachary, Emony, and also Dope Motions who run channels too. And I think it's really, really helpful. So I wanted to share it with all of you as well. And this is the type of post that you could do and you're not having to create brand new pieces of work, but I can guarantee you that someone, if you post that one, either us or one of these people would also share that post as well. So I highly recommend that you do these kind of things because you're posting on social media, but you're not having to create brand new work, but you're still building connections and community and giving value to other people. You're just doing it based on other people's content, if that makes sense. So hopefully, this is all making sense. I can see that some of you are saying that your tidy labels, tidy, tidy labels, cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Collabs, yeah. So Juan is saying collabs would be community posts too, yes. So any kind of shout out really is great. I think that anywhere where you can tag someone else is gonna be really helpful because they are, you know, probably going to share that too they're going to comment on it they're going to like it so that is getting you engagement which we know is the most important thing on social media cool so let's continue so a sales type of post for a motion designer designer or animator you know it could be your showreel so this is the beginning of jeff burns showreel and I think that this is a pretty obvious one. You know, you could also do um, telling people about your new website maybe or sharing a case study or sharing a testimonial from a client even. I think that's like a fantastic idea because then you're showing that you have some social proof that people hire you and they like to work with you too. So this could be a salesy type of post for Motion Hatch. So here we're talking about our new course client quest and you know obviously I imagine if we spent the whole time promoting our course then people maybe wouldn't pay attention and they maybe they wouldn't believe that it's the best course for freelance designers and animators but because we obviously give a lot of things for free we give you a lot of value we teach you a lot of things through our YouTube channel as well you understand what it's like to you know, work with me to see how I teach and all that sort of stuff. So you know that when you purchase a course from us, then obviously you're gonna get that same experience and if not better. So I think that by building the trust up front with people, this really helps when you come to promote your own things. And it will be the same as well with, you know, when you're promoting your own work, because you've built trust, you've built a community, people will want to back you, of course, too. And they'll want to dive deeper with you as well and work with you too. So I think that this is a really good example as well. So like I said, if you haven't already, do go and download the social guide. So you can go to motionhatch.com forward slash social guide, and that will give you 52 posts of inspiration. So if you want more inspiration, you want to look through more different posts from designers, you can see we've got actual posts in there with suggested copy and things like that, then make sure you go and download it. So how to post on social media without feeling overwhelmed. I think that it can be really difficult, you know, but I'm going to give you my top tips for posting on social without feeling overwhelmed now. And um, I think the, the best thing that you can do is to focus on one platform. 
because obviously all the platforms are different and they favor slightly different types of posts and your ideal clients might not be on all of them. And I want to talk a little bit here about the 80-20 rule or the Pareto principle, which states that 20% of our efforts are usually giving us 80% of the results. So if we look at this through the lens of social media, then what we need to do is we need to track which platforms are giving us the most results and we need to use them. So if you're not sure, then you should start asking your clients, you know, how do they find you? And I would recommend that you try a platform for three to six months. And then if it isn't working for you, then obviously move to a different platform as well. So I'm sure that you are all wondering which platform has the best results. So I'm going to give you a little bit of my thoughts at the time of that we're doing this live, but obviously these are generalizations and you should do your own experimentation. Like I said, you should try out the platforms and see which ones work for you and your clients because not everybody is going to find that they get the same results. So I think it's really interesting that actually TikTok has been the fastest growing between 2020 and 2021 with 100% more user growth in the US in the past two years. So this could potentially be somewhere for motion designers and animators to go and make use of that especially because it's a video platform too and like I said earlier I think Steffi Fung has definitely made the most of that platform so you could go over there and check out what she's doing and follow some of the people and I I think it could be a really good shout because I don't think that it's as saturated as Instagram but does it mean that you're clients over there you know I'm not sure this is why we need to do experimentation because it really depends on your ideal client and the type of client you want but it are people getting attention over there and organic reach yes they definitely are another platform that a lot of our client quest students are finding results on is LinkedIn and I think this is because it's a b2b platform you know business to business platform It has good organic reach for videos right now. And also it's not too overcrowded like Instagram is, for example. So I definitely think for those reasons that LinkedIn is also a good one to try out. So I just wanted to give you a few suggestions if you are really wondering, you know, where to get started if you really weren't sure and you hadn't really dove into any of the social media platforms before now. So the second thing that's going to help you to not get overwhelmed is really planning your posts out in advance. So I recommend that you plan them like a week ahead or a month ahead as much as you possibly can do. This is why we're doing starting this social media challenge now so that you've got this time to plan ahead and you can start putting some thought into what you will post in our social media challenge in April. So we've listed a few social media tools here. There's lots of free social media tools, like some of them are native to the platforms like Facebook, Creative Studio. We've obviously got Canva and Later. And then we've got things like Hootsuite, Loomly, Buffer. There's a ton, like we totally haven't listed all of them here. But just to give you an idea, there's lots of scheduling platforms where you can schedule your posts out in advance. And this is gonna save you so much time and means that you're not actually having to be on the platform to post and then getting distracted, say, by other people's posts and things like that. So as I mentioned earlier, it's extremely important to track your results. So you can see that where you're getting the most engagement and what is leading you to get clients because there's no point in us posting on social media if we aren't getting the results that we want. So obviously most of us probably want more or better clients. So if we aren't getting that from a platform or at least not growing on network, which is then therefore enabling us to do that, then we should try something else or try a different platform, for example. So if you don't already know where your clients are coming from, like I mentioned earlier, what you should do is go all in on one platform for three to six months and start tracking your results. And we do have a tracker in our social media guide as well. So you can go in there month to month 
and you can track the results that you've got. So you can see here, we've got a page in our Notion, in our Notion social media guide where you can track your success. And I think it's really, really important to do that. So let's have a little recap. So we talked about how social media can help you to get clients. We've talked about what to post on social media. We've talked about how to post on social media without feeling overwhelmed. So now I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about our social media challenge. It won't take very long and then we'll get into the Q&A section of this workshop. So the most important thing when you're trying anything new or you're trying to do something where you've had a little success before, I think is to have accountability. So this is why we've set up this social media challenge. And it's starting on the 1st of April, and no, it's not an April Fool. <laughs> so if you're watching this later, of course, you can still take part in the challenge, and you would just start your challenge anytime after the 1st of April. So don't worry about that, you can still go and download the guide, and you can still do the challenge, and we'll still give you feedback and that kind of thing. So here is your challenge. So I want you to post and engage on social media every day. So I don't necessarily want you to post every day, but I want you to either post or be engaging with other people every day. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna create 15 social media posts using the Rick's formula. And if you download the social media guide, there's already a ton of examples and copy in there. And on the in-between days, what you're gonna do is you're gonna engage with other people who are taking part in the social media guide and also other motion designers and studios that you admire. And I want you to share the hashtag so that others can engage with you as well, of course, because you want them to come and engage and comment on your post so you can see how powerful this is gonna be if we all do it together because it's gonna rise everybody to the top because we're all gonna comment on other people's posts on the in-between days of posting our own posts. And also we're gonna give you feedback and we want you to ask other people to take part as well and download the guide for prompts and examples, including the resources like our tracker. So Sam is gonna post the hashtag in the chat and in the comments because I've forgotten to write on here. I believe it is Hatchling Social Media Guide, but Sam can pop it in there as well. So like I said, do go and download the social guide because that's gonna give you access to 52 posts of inspirations, the tracker and a place to post your ideas. And we're also gonna be sending you emails out at the beginning of April as well with more instructions on how to get involved in the challenge. Cool, so now we're gonna go into the Q and A. So let's, Switch back my camera, there we go. Now I can see Hatchling Social Challenge. Thank you, Sam. So you wanna use the hashtag Hatchling Social Challenge. You can even post about this workshop maybe and say um, that you've been and to tell everyone else to watch the workshop and get involved and use Hatchling Social Challenge and then obviously we'll share it as well and things like that. So, awesome. So let's bring up the questions that we've had so far. So, so Ryan Leary says that he recently made the switch from having dormant artists Instagram to posting my current work on my main account. I've had the hardest time knowing how to approach them separately. Yeah, so I think it, it can be pretty tricky and I, I think that it definitely is good to post to have a separate Instagram account for your work because essentially the Instagram feed you know looks like your portfolio so the Instagram feed should be mainly your work and your portfolio but then you can use reels and you can use stories and stuff like that to do these more relatable posts the more personal posts and the community posts and things like that. So I think it is good to s switch to like separate them. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure what your why you went from your artist Instagram account to your main one. Maybe you have a follow up question about that. Um, I think that 
it would be good to hear what your question would be. Um, Steffi Fung was uh, the motion designer who's got a successful TikTok. If you want to follow her, we could probably put the link in the chat as well. So it's like Steffi, S-T-E-P-H-Y, and then Fung is F-U-N-G. I had to think about that there. <laughs> cool, yeah, so let me know if you've got any more questions in the chat today about our challenge or about anything that I've been teaching you today on this workshop. Um, Roxana is saying about sharing events in the industry. Of course, I think that's a great idea. Sharing any events that are coming up, you know, being helpful to other people on social media is really, really important. So yeah, I'm going to stick around for a bit longer because I know that the live, there's a little bit of a delay. So if you have a question, do you post it in the chat? So Audrey is asking me to put the challenge slide back up. I can certainly do that. So if you sign up to the social media guide as well, obviously we're gonna send you a reminders of the challenge and tell you what to do and all those kind of good things as well. Yes, you want, Juan is asking, are there going to be specific prompts in the challenge that are, we're going to give you a prompt for every day that you need to create a post and then we're going to tell you when to go and engage with other people's posts as well. So Richard was asking about people posting. Um, let me just get up the screen again. So you would see everyone's challenge post because everyone's going to use the hashtag hatchling social challenge. So if you use that hashtag and then you go and search for that hashtag, you're going to be able to see everyone else's posts as well. So I'm just bringing up the challenge for you all again to remind you but remember we are going to send out emails and everything like that so here we go and if anyone's got any questions at all you can also always reach out to hello at motionhatch.com if you're watching you know after on the replay. So I believe there you go. This should be the challenge posts up again now. So yes, I'm just going through the questions. <laughs> Ahmed says more cat photos, please. Yes. Well, if you subscribe to the channel, we may feature Elvis later on. <laughs> yes, um, and like Sam is saying, if you use Hatching Social Challenge and tag us so that we could share it in our stories as well, then we will give you feedback on your post too. Jake is saying, is it frowned upon to use videos you've created for a client to showcase your work on social media? Um, I think that it's important to obviously have permission and ideally you would have a contract or something like that that asked you, um, that asked in the beginning that you could use, you know, the work that you create to promote your business, essentially. Yeah, um, yeah, TikTok is very addictive. So I think that's where posting in advance comes in. I'm not sure whether you can do that on TikTok, but um, I think any way that you can post in advance um, on the platform so you're not actually sitting on there and looking at it um, is really good. And then you 
give yourself say like 30 minutes a day or something like that to post on social media um like comments on other people's posts and engage with others so that you're really you know putting boundaries on it I think that um really helps oh thank you Ahmed that's so nice of you to say I'm not sure what your question is about do's and don'ts, Justin, if you want to rephrase that. Yeah, so Samuel's asking about how to get more views on LinkedIn. Most of my posts on there only get two likes versus Instagram get 40 likes per post. I think that one thing we need to think about is about whether Instagram, even though it's getting 40 likes, is that actually leading you to get clients? And by posting on LinkedIn, are you getting more clients? Because what I found um, and working with students in our course as well is that they might get less likes on LinkedIn, but they actually get more work from it because they reach out to clients and they're adding clients on there and engaging with clients on LinkedIn. So then therefore, when they post their work, their clients are seeing that and reminded about who they are and they might call them up for a project. So I think it's about testing it in that way and not just based on likes, but to get more views, I think, you know, you can do these, um, the Rick's formula. So you can make relatable posts, you can make interactive posts. Obviously that's gonna get you more views and likes because if you're asking people a question, you're asking them to engage with you, um, then they're gonna do that and then LinkedIn's gonna push out to more people. Thanks, Audrey. Um, Sam says that Later has a TikTok scheduling function for anyone that wants to know about that. So later.com. If you go there, you can schedule your TikToks in advance and then obviously you're not getting distracted by the platform as well. Cool, awesome. So I'm just gonna check if we've got any more questions that I missed. So Stas says, does it make sense to target any particular markets in social media? Like I'm from the Ukraine, but want to work with US clients and if then how? So yeah, I think that I would focus on, you know, reaching out to US clients through LinkedIn and stuff like that. So what you could do is you could go onto LinkedIn, find the US studios, then find the producers or the creative directors or the marketing directors and those kind of people, find them on there, engage with their posts on there. So this is how you're usually using social to engage with them. And then also you're posting your work at the same time so that if they follow you back and all that kind of stuff, they're regularly reminded of you and your work. And then you can also send them direct emails too. So I think that's how I would go about that one. Um, so Richard says, are people posting works in progress or finished pieces? Yeah, so I think it's really important to post behind the scenes and stuff like that because people can see how to work with you and they it builds a lot of trust as well. And also everybody loves to see behind the scenes. So I think that it makes it more engaging too. Um, so I would definitely not always post finished work. Like a good example of an interactive post for a non-finished piece of work would be um, if you were doing a logo or something like that and you were like, hey, do you like the color of this logo or of this logo? So hopefully that helps. I'm just crossing the questions out. Um, so Reclass says, uh, I was planning to start freelancing with platforms such as Behance, but prior to, and stuff, but prior to Instagram, because it doesn't have that good growth as before. Do you think that's a good idea? Yeah. So I think I've heard good things about Behance. I haven't tested it out much myself, but I think that that Behance could be a good place to start. Um, definitely we found that LinkedIn is really good and I agree with you about the 
reach currently on Instagram isn't great because obviously they want you to pay for advertising and things like that. So that's why I mentioned LinkedIn and obviously TikTok as well. Um, so Asaya is saying how to overcome imposter syndrome. It's really difficult. It's really hard to overcome imposter syndrome. I think that the best way that I've found is just to keep doing it, you know, keep making work and keep putting it out there because I think that it, that's the only way to get over it really. And also ask for feedback and get around like-minded people and other motion designers and stuff like that. Like in our, when you join our courses, you get added to our alumni community and where we have regular office hours, we give feedback to the students and, um, you know, we help them to know where they are in the industry and what, how the good their work is and things like that. And I think that can help getting feedback, but also just keep practicing and keep putting yourself out there. Like for example, I have done a hundred podcast episodes now, so I feel quite confident that I'm a podcaster, you know, whereas in the beginning, I, I think I wouldn't necessarily refer to myself as a podcaster because I had a little bit of imposter syndrome around that. But by keep shipping a podcast every other week, you know, it makes me feel like now I feel like I'm a podcaster. So I think that doing the work and putting yourself out there can really help, even though I know it is really difficult. Um, so yeah, so it's a Momo monster, great name. If those people, producers, creative directors aren't active on LinkedIn, is it best to interact with the main company account? Yeah, so it can be tricky. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend, for example, going and interacting on Instagram with like someone's personal, um, profile like if it was a producer and you can see that it's like quite a personal profile, then obviously I wouldn't do that. Potentially it's worth interacting with the main company account. Sometimes depends how big they are. You're potentially just getting a social media person behind that. Um, but if it's a small animation studio, for example, you might be talking to the owner or at least a producer or something like that. So I think it really depends on the size of the company. If you really can't find anybody to warm up and engage with um, on social media, then obviously sending them a direct email is probably a good shout, but I think that it's more effective if you can have some sort of relationship with them before you do that. Um, yes, so Stas also says regarding LinkedIn, is there any difference between using a personal versus a company account? I would 100% recommend using a personal account because the company accounts just don't get as much reach. And I think that it just really helps obviously to use the thing that's gonna get the most reach. So for example, our motion hatch LinkedIn doesn't get seen by as many people as my personal LinkedIn. So I would definitely recommend um, going with your personal one, even if you're posting as a studio. So what I would do is I was make, I would make your studio account post as the studio, but then maybe you would kind of repost that and kind of add a bit more to it and things like that. Uh, yeah, so Luca's saying about how do you get out of creative blocks? Sometimes once I'm done with a client, I don't have the energy to work on my projects. It can sometimes take a week or so to get my creative juices back. Yeah, I think it's... um. It's a, a tough one. Uh, that's why I think it's good to do this Rick's formula because you're not always relying just on your content and on you putting out original creative work. Um, and I think if you download the social media guide, you'll see a lot of examples in there where people are sharing other things. Maybe they're sharing others work, work and things like that. And maybe just even by doing that, you're kind of getting yourself a bit more excited about the industry again and about working with other people and that sort of thing. Um, sometimes, you know, you just need a bit of a break and, and that's okay too. But I think like sharing other people, focusing on those interactive and community posts and stuff like that during those times of creative block are really going to help you. Cool. 
So yeah, I can see that Sam is helping you all in the chat as well and sharing videos and stuff like that. So if you're watching the replay of this, you do have a question for me. Um, I will answer all the comments and the questions under the video under the replay as well. So do post your question underneath the replay of this workshop and I'll be happy to answer it. Yeah, and Jake's saying he's been doing it for 13 years and still feels like an imposter. So everybody feels like that. Awesome. Cool. Well, yeah, thank you everybody for showing up to our live today. I really appreciate it. And I hope that I will see all your great social media posts when we start our challenge in April. So do make sure you sign up for the challenge now so you don't forget. And then we'll be sending you email reminders and things like that around the 1st of April. Um, and telling you how to get started. So yes, thank you, Sam, as well. Exactly, Lopsang saying thank you, Sam, for being in the chat as well and helping out with this live stream. We obviously really appreciate you. So thank you, everybody. And please do make sure you share this with your friends, share this workshop so that more people can get better at social media and get more clients. And, and obviously, the more people in the social challenge, the better, because that's going to help everybody's posts have more engagement and therefore rise to the top of the social media platforms. So awesome. I'm so thankful that you're all here today. And I really appreciate you. And yeah, I'm excited to see what you all do in the challenge. And remember, if you sign up, use hashtag hatchling social challenge on your posts. And the guide is at motionhatch.com forward slash social guide. So thank you very much, everybody. And um, if you've enjoyed this live workshop and you would like me to do more of these kind of things, then do let me know in the chat or in the comments below this video. Sweet. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. I appreciate you. See ya.